trust the process. Pain is power. All great things take time. I am unbreakable. Like many entrepreneurs, his journey wasn't easy. He dropped out of college, started a real estate appraisal company and realized how bored he was, <laughs> launched a worldwide streetwear clothing company called I Am King, which led him into transitioning into the launch of many restaurants concepts. After his ice cream changed the millennial age and the food and beverage industry with about 30 plus locations to date and growing, his team has been able to spice things up and contribute his past experiences to the food and beverage concept. Please help me welcome Andy Nguyen. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. <laughs> no, again, thank you again, man. I really, really appreciate you, um, especially for taking time out of your day to, right. to come on. Uh, and, happy to be here. <laughs> absolutely. And here with the Unbreakables, man, what I really like to do is really deep dive into who you were before mm -hmm. Afters Ice Cream, right? Because that's what mm -hmm. you're essentially known for, right? Mm -hmm. Especially with all the other restaurant concepts that you have. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm really interested, especially really getting uh, for our audience and our viewers that are not really fully aware of your story. Mm -hmm. Let's take them back just a little bit, just so they get to know you a little better. And then we'll slowly transition from there. Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. Yeah, so if we can just touch base just a little bit on childhood, youth, upbringing, college, and so forth, and then we'll go yeah. from there. Okay, uh, as a kid, I grew up in Orange County my entire life. I uh, grew up in an area uh, called Little Saigon, um, the largest Vietnamese community outside of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like I am a product of my parents coming from Vietnam during the war and I happened to be born here. Um, growing up, I was surrounded by a melting pot of, of different people. Um, but, but I also had a lot of uh, Vietnamese friends as well because a lot of the community was in the area. Um, so I, I grew up in this area that where I'm learning about American culture. Um, but I'm also, I also have fr friends that are, are going through the same things with me that their parents are not okay with them, you know, becoming so Americanized, but this is all we know. Uh, I was always a little, really awkward as a kid, really shy, uh, really quiet. I didn't speak very much at all. I didn't, I didn't talk my first words until I was like four years old. Um, I started trying to figure myself out as a kid, just like everyone else trying to, uh, trying to fit in and, as I tried to fit in, I, but the groups I kept falling into were the troublemakers. And with the troublemakers, that led to, you know, my grades dropping, that led to me being influenced to, you know, getting arrested, to getting kicked out of school, to getting in fights, and all these, all these little um, misfit things that we used to do as kids. <laughs> um, I think through that process, I started learning, like, hey, I don't, want to fit in anymore i don't want to be like everyone else that's like not really who i, I envision myself as mm -hmm. and, and i don't really want to continue disappointing my parents so after i got kicked out of school i think that 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 year that i was pretty much stuck at home i used that time to reevaluate my future and myself and i started developing more of, of like a brand new confidence in myself and, and really understanding like, hey, I don't have to be in the same position as everyone else. I can develop my own character. I can be, I can become my true self. And as I returned back to my old high school, you know, I became a completely different person. Became more social. I became more involved. I spoke up more. My personality started, you know, coming out more. And a lot of that drives into like my business today. You know, like if I didn't, if I didn't get into that, if I didn't break out of that shell, I don't. Who knows where I'd be right now. Um, but I think those early days of like, for, for me as a kid, you know, you're getting kicked out of school, you're like rock bottom to your parents, you're like, what, like your, your life's pretty much to them. My life was over, you know, cause you're, you're getting kicked out of school. Like, what, what are you going to do? Um, but thankfully I turned it around. I did community, I went to community college afterwards. 
didn't really know what I wanted to do as, as my future. And I connected with my best friend who happened to be in uh, real estate uh, as, his, as a business. And he kind of convinced me to drop out of school and, and join and start our own company with him. Man. So real quick, did you go to Chilaquinta? Yeah, I'm an Aztec. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I went to LQ for two two days. Really? And because I grew up in, I used to live off of Bolsa, Bolsa and Warner, Bolsa okay. Street. I yeah. went there for two days, okay. but then my aunt got me into Santiago. Oh, really? So, but I had a bunch of friends that, <laughs> that went there. And when I okay. found out, I was like, oh, shoot, it's super close, so local. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, man, what I really admire about you is the fact that you're able to notice you know, you were different and you were unique in your own way. Even the way that you dress today, like it separates you from everybody else, right? Yep. And you have this nice st style to you. So I feel like, you know, not many kids or teenagers in this day and age are able to recognize that because they're right. so used to just following, right? right? And not necessarily being a leader. So for anyone that's that's listening, especially in times right now, what can you say to those you know, those teenagers or people that are about to graduate where when it comes to, they're still trying to discover who they are, yeah. but in the sense of not really following the wrong crowd. Right. Mm -hmm. Because right now, like it, they say, find a mentor, find okay. someone that's doing what you're doing and model it, but not everybody knows that. So what advice can you give them, especially with what you've gone through in your journey? I think, I think just, I think just breaking out of your shell and doing things that you're not comfortable with and, and trying different things that you're always curious about. I think that'll lead to different things because the more you do things that you're not comfortable with it becomes like the new norm, you know, it becomes like normal for you. It's like me, public speaking. I remember like a decade ago, I would not be caught public speaking. I would not, I would be shaking in my boots talking to you on camera right now. You know, I couldn't even look into a camera. Um, but now it's like second nature to me and it's like, it's like normal for me to, to speak on camera now and to other people. But before I wouldn't be able to do that. I used to fear, I used to throw up every single time I had to go do a presentation. I used to um, feel that way, man. No. <laughs> but I think it's just breaking out your shell, doing things that you're uncomfortable with and getting used to it. And once, once, once it becomes like a norm, then you, you actually start enjoying it. And then you start learning a lot more about yourself and, and the things that you're actually capable of doing. It's that repetition, right? And being consistent. Yep. Right. And it, it's, it's crazy because your story, it's so broad and so different, right? So you go to college, you were convinced by your friend to drop out of college. You go to your parents and let them know like, hey, look, I'm dropping out. What was their reaction to you? Oh, they, I didn't tell them I was dropping out. I told them I was going to still go to, I, still, I told them, I lied to them and said <laughs> I was going go to I was gonna go to school and do the real estate thing both at the same time. Um, Cause you know, their dream, their, their, their goals for me was to finish school, you know, like, hey, like, you're like my dad. I'm like his, his first son. I'm like the oldest kid. And, and you know, I can't tell him I'm going to drop out of school, but eventually I started doing the real estate thing and, and I get my license and I slowly start backing away from school. And you know, they kind of just like, Oh, I guess he dropped out of school. It's too late to say anything now. He's already well into his business career. No, that's pretty awesome. Okay. So <laughs> then you transition into the real estate, right? Yeah. And how long did you end up doing that for? uh probably two and a half to three years i was doing the, the real estate thing um i was really young um uh, definitely you don't see many kids that at that time at my age that were doing that mm -hmm. um it wasn't the norm i didn't even know anything about real estate until i went to the industry like i had no idea what i was getting myself into um i didn't love it but i, I picked up a lot of skills from it that i still value to this day whether it's you know uh, business professionalism um driving long distances to, to, to greet people. And, and the way I take my pictures, I was shooting camera pictures back then of shooting houses. So I'm learning how to, you know, like I apply those skills to today about lighting. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my first, that was first, my first real business. That, that's pretty awesome, man. And it, it's crazy that you're able to still go back and correlate what you've learned and, and transition it into your business today. Right. Yep. So what inspired you to get into entrepreneurship? And I know in that time it was what I'm keen, the, the streetwear clothing apparel. So what transitioned that move? Um, from, from my first entrepreneurship, you know, like even going into becoming only my first business in real estate, I had no idea what the word entrepreneurship meant. I just knew like my friends, like we can own our own business. And I was like, what? 
are you serious like is that <laughs> that real are you that just easy? <laughs> are you just making some shit up like like i don't know i don't, I don't know what you're talking about but it sounded a lot better than what I was doing in school because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, what, what the hell? Let's, let's go for it. And as for me transitioning into apparel, um, if you look in my yearbook, you see I'm like the super, like I'm dressing like super loud. I'm dressing like super crazy. If you hung, if you hung out with me back then, you know, I spent all my lunch money on buying, you know, saving up for, I'd starve so I can go buy new sneakers. Um, and that's all I cared about. I just wanted to look super fresh at school. Um, and and as I was doing the real estate thing, I started realizing I was like, this is not as fun as I, as I thought it would be. Like, cool, I'm making money, but that wasn't really my motivating factor in the first place. Um, it was like just the fact that I get to work with my friends and own something for ourselves. That's what that's what really got me to to go and do it. But the apparel thing, you know, my friend had a clothing brand and he was starting. Um, and he needed me for a photo shoot. I ended up doing the photo shoot for him. And from there, we ended up renting an office together. So he did clothing on one side. I did real estate on the other side. And you could see you could see my attention span just like go towards him, even though he wasn't doing much or making a lot of money. What he was doing was way cooler than what I was doing to me. To me, I was like, hey, this clothing thing is way, I'm way more interested in that. I love fashion. I love clothes. I don't know much about the industry, but you know, like this is my gateway in. Um, so I, I, I used that time to learn from him. And he ended up starting another brand. I wanted to invest money into it. He said, no. I said, all right, forget you. I'm going to go start my own brand then. You're not ready, right? <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm not ready. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go back to my best friend. We're going to come up with our own ideas and we're going to develop our own, our, own, uh, our own brand on what we envisioned to be cool. So let me ask you, did he regret that decision of not no. putting you on board? No? <laughs> I don't think we both, we both didn't regret it. You know, we both, you know, he's still one of my closest friends to this day. Uh, he's, and he, he got, ooh, he got very, very successful. Like he, he's, he's done very def career defining moves in the apparel industry. So he's done great for himself and you know, I've done great for myself too. So we're both very it, happy. It was, it was a good opportunity, right? It was good. It was, it was a good driving force for me too. You know, like, that really like gave me a lot of the passion and energy to, to, to go off on my own and do it. I was like, Hey, this guy's not gonna let me do it. Uh, even though he has more knowledge than me on, on the skills I don't have, you know, I was just, I was, I was going to go figure out myself then. If you're not going to, you're not going to let me do your, with your brand, I'm going to go learn, learn how to build my own design team and sales force and whatever. No, that's pretty awesome. So in that moment of getting out of your comfort zone, right. And obviously learning new skill sets, did you have any mentors or influencers or idols that you looked up to in that space, whether it was entrepreneurship space or, mm -hmm the the clothing brand industry like who were who were people that you idolized or aspired um, to i think on entrepreneur space there wasn't a lot of people that that looked like like look like me or in my age group mm -hmm. um there were idols like i love rap music so i looked up to like you know like jay-z and then kanye and pharrell and then <laughs> you know i loved like i love basketballs or like or those are like my superheroes like kobe bryant and jordan yeah. and then um in the apparel industry there was a brand called lrg um, oh yeah, and, LRG. That was and the good and the guy. owner, the founder of LRG, happened to be Vietnamese like me, you know. And he looked the way when you saw him, he looked like a rapper. He had like ten gold chains on. He had more gold chains on than a rapper than a real rapper. And I was like, dude, this guy is crazy. Like, I've never seen anyone that looks like this, but he looks just like me with you know, mixed with a rapper. And I was like, okay, well, if he can do it, that's what I want to be like. That's pretty awesome. Did you ever reach out to him at all? Yeah, I met him. I, I, I actually hung out at his house. Uh, he, he passed away a few, a few years ago, but uh, I think a year before he passed away, I was, I was hanging out at his house with him and, and talking to him and asking a lot of questions when I hung out there. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So when did you realize it was time to transition from the apparel industry into the food and beverage industry? Because you've had a successful apparel brand. I'm yeah. king. I mean, I've seen many you know influencers rappers wearing your stuff so what was that transition like um if you really pay attention to the fashion industry every every few years it's like a new wave of new crop of brands that go in and out and i think for myself it was like i was like i don't know how much more of this wave up and down wave where i have good seasons and the bad seasons and and nothing is secure enough for me to pursue it and then at the same time i'm also gaining a lot of new hobbies through my skill sets that I'm, you know, I'm learning and picking up. I'm like, well, I, like, I also like this now. Oh, food, food is fun too. I like, I like eating out and, and talking about places and re reviewing it. 
and then you know I started putting together my ideas and I pitched it around and everyone kind of laughed at me and thought I was crazy um, but I happened to connect with a few people that had a, a similar vision mm-hmm. and it wasn't it wasn't something I was going to do as I wasn't planning to do it as my career, like life savior. Cause I was, I was still busy with the clothing brand at this time. And then when we decided to do the ice cream thing, you know, we, we launched it at a, at a time where it was February, you know, February is still winter time. Like it's not ice cream stores aren't packed in the winter time, you know, but then something just happened and we opened the store and it just took off. So we're like, okay, this thing is super crazy, a lot crazier than I thought. And I'm going to try to balance both the ice cream and clothing thing at the same time. But I think as we got into the second year of afters, I think we knew that it was time to figure out how to exit the clothing thing and then focus more on the food industry because what we were doing at the time was was so different. And the impact that we had was, was so huge that we knew we can, we can do both at that same time. So I just transitioned over. I ended up selling my uh, clothing brand and focused on the the ice cream thing. Was that, was that a hard transition? I mean, again, you're going into a different space that you have absolutely no knowledge of, right? I mean, you you, you compare from the real estate to clothing apparel to food and beverage industry like that, that's just a whole different market. So how long did it take you to actually, you know, tap into it to your full potential to realize, okay, you know what? I can do this. I'm passionate about this. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I don't, I don't, it's so hard to pinpoint when it happened. Um, it just, we were so inspired by the time and we, we found things that worked and plugging in the right pieces and we all, I think all of us, knew, like all of us knew to focus on our strengths. Like mm-hmm. what I do in clothing and in, in, from real estate to clothing and food, I'm kind of still doing the same exact things. I'm still doing, you know, like marketing. I'm still mm-hmm. talking to other business professionals. I'm still doing a lot of those same layers like guerrilla marketing. Like I'm applying those same things to each industry. So I'm not, it's not like I'm really doing, I'm doing different things. Yes, it's, they're all different industries, but I'm still applying the same tools and lessons to each one it's just either a different product and or service right Correct. you yep. adjust it to that so i know in the last um event for the level up society you spoke mm-hmm. about f- investing fifteen thousand dollars into yep. your first afters ice cream can you talk a little bit about that and how that process was of starting the first first one of course um the the crazy thing about the first location was that it was already a store. It was already an ice cream store before we came in there. It was owned by um, this group of brothers, a lot older than than we were. Um, but the store was only open like once every two weeks. Like the store wasn't even open. So we're like, hey, is this guy getting rid of a store? And we're looking to we're looking to buy a store anyways. Mm-hmm. So for us, we we just walk in there like, hey, we want to we want to we want to buy you out. And the guy the guy was like, uh, no, I don't want to sell my store. We're like, hey, well, you're not even open. But it's just like. Why don't you just hand it over to us? And he goes, I I still want to make ice cream. And for us, we didn't know how to make ice cream. So we took a long process of of, of trying to crack a deal. And we ended up partnering up together. Uh, And we said we would invest money to upgrade the store. You know, so we don't have, you know, there's not much to do. We just have to repaint the store a bit, work on some new flavors, um, clean up the place. And we used that $15,000 to put it together. And we got the store up and running and we made that money back in a few days. Wow. That's amazing. So like for our entrepreneurs that are watching, whether they want to open a, let's say a food concept business or maybe Mm -hmm. a meal prep um, business, what would you say is the initial startup cost for something like that? It all ranges. It can range from anywhere from a few thousand dollars to hundreds of thousand dollars. I think, um, I think it depends what you're trying to do. Uh, how much how much risk you're willing to take? Uh, for myself, I'm always looking at at low risk, low risk, high reward. Um, uh, making sure that if the concept doesn't work out, I can always switch or pivot or or leave with leave with not being just my life destroyed. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I'm always trying to start small. I also always believe in starting small, uh, and then you start building things up from there. If you can't even if you can't make it work small, then how how are you gonna make how are you gonna be organized when things are big? 
Of course. So at what point, so you were, you said you guys invested about 15 grand, made you guys' money back in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. At what point were you guys able to pay yourselves? And when did you realize, okay, we have something. Let's rinse, repeat, and cr- open another store. Um, we, st- we, we saved a lot of them. We made a ton of money at our first location. Um, but our goal, I think, I, th- I think we were deciding the first few months to see what happens because we didn't know it was going to be like that. There's no way to predict that we're going to have long lines or we're gonna, it was going to be as crazy as it was. So we're like, let's just, let's just make sure we tack on cushion. We all have other businesses already so we can survive off that. You know, we still have the clothing thing, other guys do real estate. So everyone has their money already. So we're not, no one's going to take the money. Let's just see what happens and make a decision a few months from now. And I think, I think once we hit like six, seven months, we found another location. So we said, do we, do we start cashing out or do we invest into another location? We decided to invest our money back into another location. Ooh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So how did you see the trend of people wanting to try experimental food? Because you go into afters ice cream, right? You have the milky bun, you have all these crazy flavors, good tasting flavors compared to a Baskin Robbins or yeah. to something as similar to maybe Cold Stone, right? Yep. So what made you guys see like a problem in those existing ones, especially Orange County mm-hmm. and say, okay, we can create something that's different that does not exist today? Uh, I think we always applied it back to ourselves of what we wanted and what we wanted to eat and where we wanted to hang out and what kind of vibe we wanted to see. And when you go to those places, like you just didn't get that, you know, you didn't, you know, we, we stopped paying, we stopped going to ice cream stores. We haven't gone to ice cream stores in like years. The only places we go to are like boba. We go, we go to a boba <laughs> shop. Um, but then, you know, we, we saw a lot of artisanal ice cream shops, like in different areas outside of like San Francisco and New York and all the big cities. But I think those flavors were too, way too artisanal for, 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 for like me. I was like, okay, well I like balsamic strawberry sounds cool, but it doesn't really relate to me. It doesn't make sense. And I was like, in my, you know, and what I grew up with, I like eating, like, I like drinking boba. I like, I like, I like my culture of Vietnamese coffee. I liked, I like drinking horchata. And I was like, okay, well, how do I turn, how do I turn these familiar things into ice cream? Uh, so I wanted something cool and different, but I also wanted it very approachable at the same time. Mm, yeah. I love it. That, that one's pretty good, the Orchatha one. And yeah. I like that. What's that blue? The blue, the, is it the, the monster one? The Cookie Monster. That one's pretty bomb. If Thank you guys you. have not tried it, I highly recommend it with the Milky Bun. You can never go wrong. <laughs> that's, the number, that's the number one flavor by it far. It is. So, yeah. For, so for someone that's interested in building their business or personal brand, what are some of your, I mean, I'd say top three strategies and tactics that you can share with us that have helped you from a branding and marketing perspective? Um, I think this digging deep into storytelling and being re- as honest as possible. Um, I think people really appreciate that because, you know, social media is such a highlight reel that it's not, it seems, it seems, it doesn't seem real. You know, it doesn't seem real. It just, it's a highlight real, but it's not real. It's just a, it's, it's like unattainable. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't really relate to it. You're like, okay, well, these girls are like, you know, on all these beaches and these guys are traveling on, on jets and planes, but you're like, okay, well, that's not an everyday thing. That's not really realistic. So, you know, for myself, it's always about my brand is very, uh, I'm like, you're supposed to, I guess I'm like your next door neighbor. I'm very approachable. Like anyone can reach out and talk to me and I'll, you know, hang out and talk to you. And, um, and I'll be honest. With, I'll be, I'm very honest with people. I'm like, Hey, like, if I tell you like shit doesn't make sense. Shit doesn't make sense. You know, like I'm not going to bullshit you. And, um, I think that's what people really appreciate. Um, I think another good thing with social media marketing and branding is important is to be consistent. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, aren't consistent they fall off they're like hey well i didn't get a thousand new followers in a week so i'm just gonna quit but it you you gotta learn you gotta learn what works and you gotta learn how your story taps into the right audience and once it hits that audience you'll see things pick up but you got to stay at it and you got to keep getting better at your at your craft you can't just you can't just do what i did and expect the same results because you know your audience might not we might not have the same audience Consistency is key, right? Of course. <laughs> so what I admire about you is going back to high school, right? How you, yeah. you've said in, in previous interviews that you've always, because you went from being bullied to trying to find yourself and you had to obviously take ownership. Okay, this is who I am. I'm not going to change for anybody. I'm not going to 
be a follower. I'm going to be a leader. So going back to that moment, you said you wanted to get involved in every group it within yep. school, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. basketball, just so you can build your social skills. Yep. So what do you, how do you think that has taught you or um, taught you transitioning into entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. And for our listeners that are watching, what advice can you give when it comes to building genuine, authentic relationships? Because I see you're pretty well connected. You know, you do a lot of different collaborations with different types of people. So mm -hmm. what advice can you give in regards to relationships? Um, as a kid, I wasn't really a good speak. I wasn't good at talking. Like I was not good at building conversation. It took me a while to get comfortable. And I'm not, I'm normally not the one that, you know, I'm not that guy in that room that walks in there and then all the lights shine and I can go approach everyone, talk to anyone. I'm not really good at that. Um, so I had to play to my strengths. Right. And I, I happened, thankfully I had a really good knack for, for music and dancing. And I became a really good street dancer, oddly. And I, that, that, those, uh, that was like a way of me breaking out of my shell. You know, like I felt so comfortable when I was on the dance floor. And through that, I made a lot of friends and I learned how to communicate better. I learned how to, you know, that they, if I'm already dancing like a crazy person and, and they're, still, they, they're still here talking to me, that means, you know, I'm not so crazy after all, you know? So, and then I think just like I mentioned, just breaking out of your shell, like asking questions and you gotta learn how to get better. You gotta, you're gonna get better at it. Um, Study, eye con I think eye contact's important. Like people don't really do eye contact well. Um, shaking hand, like the way you shake somebody's hands or dab or say what's up or hugs, like those are, are very important things. Um, listening, like really listening to what people are saying and, and, and providing value for them. Like, hey, if you're gonna talk to someone and you have nothing to offer, very most likely you're not, you know, it's gonna be very hard to, to reel, them, reel them in. So if you have something to offer, like try to, try to learn about the person, find what they like, find out what they like, what they're into. and. And maybe you might not be into it, but ask some questions that, that'll, that'll help them break down their guard. Yeah, absolutely. Which can lead into an open conversation opposed to a dead end conversation, right? Correct. So Andy, you were known for after's ice cream. Yeah. So for anyone that's watching, what other food concepts and or restaurants that you're, you're a part of mm -hmm. that you can share with us? Because I know you have a whole list of other, <laughs> you know, concepts that you're you're involved in uh there's a lot of different things i i don't necessarily plug my name as crazy as i did with afters i think that was my first one i always wanted to let my other partners really shine at the projects of the chef whether it's the chefs the partners that are faces of the companies the one that loves the ones that enjoy being in the camera more than i do mm -hmm. um I, I let them take more of the shine so i own a place called doe and arrow we do cookies owned by two females moms and they pretty much lead the brand through the, through that uh, we have Ground House in Portside, which is a seafood and burger concept. And I have a great chef, Chef Fernando, with also our partner, Bear, who is a marketing monster. He, he's friends with everyone from Drake to Justin Bieber. That's um, awesome. And then we have um, a ramen concept called Show Me Nudes in Chino Hills. We have a place called Sticky's Chicken out in Houston, Texas, which is ran by a Filipino family. And they had a food truck and I helped them uh, launch it into a store. Um, I got Hello Kitty Cafe out in Las Vegas that we do. Um, other bunch of other food projects I'm working on, the stuff outside of food that I'm developing. Uh, the list kind of goes on, it gets a little crazy. Pretty soon you're gonna be all over the map, watch. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll stretch myself out to this. So, yeah. so when it comes to building relationships, collaborationships, and partnerships from a business perspective, yep. what are some things that you look for qualities or maybe, you know, because obviously they say like the, the chances of a business or partnership lasting mm -hmm. is, is very slim to none, right? Of so what has helped you along your entrepreneur journey that you can share with us? Um, I think understanding everyone, understanding the roles and being really transparent. I think that is super important. Um, respecting one another is really important. Like, you know, respecting each other's time. Um, cause we don't have a lot of time and, and sometimes, you know, you can't rely everyone to get their tasks done. It's, um, it's like, sometimes it's like babysitting. So it's, it's a, who's, 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 who's going to be the babysitter and who's going to be the ones that are, who's going to be the little babies and that you have, you know, that handle, finish their work and, and make sure they drink their milk and, and eating and, and stuff like that. So I think you have to lay out, lay out your roles and you need to 
make sure you handle your work on time. If you don't do your job, then a lot of problems are going to happen. Um, understand that business is not easy and entrepreneur as an entrepreneur and leader and the boss of the team, you're probably going to get paid less. You got to, cause you got to make sure you pay out all the bills first. You got to pay all your staff and whatever's left on that, on that pie is, is what you're going to get. So it, you might, if it doesn't do well early on, you're not going to get anything for a while. And usually through that people, people can't hang on. They can't hang on. You know, they can't, they can't fight through it and last through it. But the ones that, that do and continue to get better, those are the ones that are, 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 are the difference maker. Mm-hmm. And being an entrepreneur is not, is not easy. It's, it's super, super hard because you're putting out fires all the time and everyone has, is, everyone looks to you for answers. That, that's some really good points right there. And especially because there's so many different personalities, right? Correct. So you have to be obviously responsible and accountable for your, your, your part. So throughout your whole entrepreneur journey and everything that you've experienced in your life, what would you say your top three takeaways and lessons are? Uh, top three takeaways and lessons. One would be just go out and try, try, try something. Cause you never know what, what you'll, what will come from it. I, that's why I, you know, everyone's like, why do you, you know, why do you take on so many projects? Why do you not say no to a lot of things? Because you never know what can happen from it. You know, like these conversations that you meet the random person that you meet on the street. Um, if you meet someone random, you never know in a few years where that person's going to be. So I think number two is like treat everyone with respect and kindness and listen to them because that guy that was maybe on the street corner, you know, like as a bum is now a CEO of another company, you know, cause his life suddenly changed with the best of luck. And now, and now you need him for something. And if, yeah. but if, if you're addicted to him, he's going to be like, Oh yeah, that's the guy that was not uh, super rude to me. I'm going to cut him like, off. I remember you. <laughs> Exactly. But if you're nice to him, he's going to be, Oh, that guy's super nice to me. Like he was awesome. Like I'm going to go and help him out. And a lot of those things do happen because I meet people that have like moved up so high in places and I'm like, Whoa. But then now that that opened the door for us to do some projects together or things that, that we would never expect in the first place. And, and now it's like a, it's a, an awesome relationship that we have. Um, third thing is, what would I say? Third thing is, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I try not to, I don't try to, I'm not trying to relive my life over again. I'm not trying to go back in time to like do what I did, be, what I did before. I always look forward. Um, I always respect my past. I, I look back on it to, to uh, understand my mistakes or understand the lessons that I had. Um, but they're just always also moving forward. Things, things might not work out, but then the next thing might be even better than what you expected. Absolutely. And I I agree with you. I feel that every conversation, every person can lead you to a new opportunity, right? Depending on what, what, anything in life, it's, there's value there, right? I agree. So with everything that you've gone through, what advice would you give your younger self? Looking back at the 18 year old or the the, the, the kid that dropped out of college? Uh, You you can't, you can't say, I can't, I can't really say anything. I don't want to be there to interrupt anything because (laughs) I don't want to interrupt those bad lessons because those bad lessons are what made me really value the successes, you know, like the, the things that the, 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 the awards, the trophies that we won along the way, like I wouldn't appreciate as much if everything just went according to plan, you know, like things were not, things, things went mayhem for me to really appreciate and value the successes. So what do what do your parents think now? Now? Out of everything that you've done, like what, what are they like? Wow, like I'm glad you didn't go to college. No. <laughs> of course, they're never going to be glad. Asian parents will always, regardless, will always want you to go, go to college. But I think they're, they're definitely very proud and happy to see how much I've blossomed and, and, ch- and changed and became who I am today. Um, they never expected me to be how I am right now. You know, they, whenever they see me on a TV interview, they're like, whoa, I never, I did not expect you to speak like that because you don't talk very much <laughs> um but then they all the cool i just I, I always tell people i was like you know what they used to they used to tell me all the time why aren't you like this kid or that kid who's a doctor or pharmacist and then now now their parent their, those kids parents are going to my parents go look i saw andy in the newspaper Vietnamese newspaper blah, blah blah and of course that makes them happy because they know that hey i'm doing something different and i'm getting i'm also not doing things just for myself it's for it's for our community as well um, and I think my parents are understanding that there's things to, more to life than just money and, and being, you know, and, and just working all the time. And I think they're, they're, they're happy. 
Yeah, it, it goes back to the traditional and the culture, right? Yep. And I feel like times have changed so much where, it, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in formal education, mm -hmm. but it's not required for you to, you know, be successful in life. Sure. So like knowing like, obviously you have kids, would you, or would you be okay if they said, dad, I don't want to go to college. I want to be an entrepreneur. I think my job is to instill as much as I can of what I've experienced and hand it off to, to my kids. And that's up to them to, to take, take with it, but they're going to have to go through lessons too, to figure it out. Maybe they go to, they, they, they leave school early and they're like, and I tell them like, Hey, you're going to miss out on the social, social aspect of meeting other people. Cause I think, I think besides education of sitting in a classroom, the social aspect is just as important, you know, meeting other people, right. learning how to, learning how to talk to people. Like those are just important things, but you need, you need to kind of go to school to do that. You know, if you're not around people, you're not going to be able to learn any of those things. Um, so I think, I think for my kids, I will do my best to instill my knowledge and experience. Same goes for my wife to our kids. And, and she works in the education field. She's a teacher. So it's not like I, I don't want my kids to go to school. Um, I just, I just, I just for myself went a different route. And I think as long as they do what makes them truly happy and what, and they are good people. I think that's, that's the, the most I can, the most the best I can do and care for. You're doing good, Andy. You're doing right. good. <laughs> I'm trying my best. So out of everybody that, influencers or idols or mentors everything that you've done in your life mm -hmm. if you can have dinner with one person and one person only and you only get to ask them one question hey. who would it be and what would you ask them i don't know what i would ask them i would i would probably i think a funny one for me i think would be where i could tell the story and tell my friends what if I could sit with Kanye West and I just ask some questions, he'll just go on a he'll just go on a rant for like he'll go on a rant for an hour or two about nothing, and I'd probably just be amused and entertained with my it, and I'd just probably share that with my friends. I think that'd be funny enough for me. I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm looking for knowledge or experience from any of these people. I maybe just want to have a fun, interesting conversation, yeah. and maybe get my mind off things and not think about work and see how this person is outside of their element. <laughs> I'm sure if it's Kanye, right, it'll go from one question to like a two hour <laughs> worth of different topics. Exactly. And I was like, okay, well, I just want to, I just, I just want, <laughs> instead of just one question, it became a two hour life lesson. Of who you knows what you're, talking about. Hey, yeah. you're wise. You're wise. <laughs> so what is next for you, Andy? What do you um, I have, I always have a bunch of things in my pocket that I'm always working on thinking about. I'm working on this a plaza in stanton that i've been developing called rodeo 39 and that's one of my biggest projects to date um that's a whole marketplace that encompasses a, a big experience um i have a coffee shop called matt black coffee it's teamed up with uh my buddies josh and james and josh is a huge street artist and james is part of a family that that just won micro uh micro roaster of the year in coffee so we have so we have super dope coffee. We have a super dope street artist and you have me in the picture. So we have this like super team that hopefully, you know, hopefully can work together. Well, you know, and if sometimes it doesn't work out well, we'll see what happens, but we, we put together a dope team and we'll, we'll see what comes from it. There you uh, go. Yeah. And I'll, I'll make sure to leave all that information in the descriptions as well. And if okay. you can, for our viewers that are watching and listening, can you just let them know how they can contact you? Yeah, they can message me through Instagram. It's the easiest way to contact me. To drop me a DM at Andy the uh, Nguyen. And I'm pretty good at replying uh, as long as you're, you're not asking me any weird, creepy <laughs> questions. And I'll, I'll reply to you. Awesome, man. I really, really appreciate you, Andy.